eternal and everlasting God. Father, we come into your divine presence first, acknowledging that you are the Lord and God all by yourself. Lord, you are the first and the last. You are the beginning and the end. You are our and the and you are worthy of our prayers. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, you are worthy of our prayers. We adore you, O God, and we've come for no other reason but to give you praise and thanks for another day's journey. Mindful of your goodness and your kindness toward us. Lord, as we lay in the image of death last night, you anchored us on this side. And early this morning, you touched us with the finger of love. Father, you are worthy of our praise. Father, you gave us a choice of clothes to wear, food on the table, Lord. In some cases, what vehicle to drive, but in all of that, you are still worthy of our praise. Father, you kept our families intact, Lord. You brought people safely home, Father. You are worthy of our praise. Father, you gave us traveling grace and mercy. Father, you are once again worthy of our praise. Father, we confess that we have not done all that you asked us to do. Lord, the truth be told, we have not done it any of that you asked us. But Lord, now we ask that you would forgive us. Father, your, your practice has been, Lord, to just deal with us from mercy's sake. For if you dealt with us from justice, Lord, we would be in trouble. But Lord, we thank you that you've extended the arm and hand of mercy toward us. And for that, we give you praise. Father, we ask that if you find anything unacceptable in the name of Jesus in us, we ask that you remove it right now. Well, Lord, we realize you will not draw near to us until we are right with you. So look us over carefully, Master, and once again, if there's anything unworthy of the name of Jesus, remove it right now. For we want to have an, an encounter with you this morning. We want to have an experience with you. We want to know we have been in your divine presence. So come, Holy Spirit, that heavenly dove, with all your quickening power, and touch our cold hearts and set them on hollow the fire, that we might know we have been in your presence. Have mercy on us this morning, Lord. Forgive us once again. Lord, we thank you for all that you've done for us. Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you. Seems so inadequate, but it is from the bottom of our hearts. Father, we ask that you bless those now that are sick among us, that you would go into the hospitals and the convalescent hospitals, the sick rooms, and touch with your healing power. Father, your son said we don't live by bread alone, but every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. So speak on our behalf, speak on their behalf right now with your healing power. Touch those who are in charge of the sick, Father, give them wisdom and a caring heart like your son, that they might minister to those who are sick. Father, we ask now that you would bless those that are going through bereavement, that you would bring the comfort, that you would bring the balm of Gilead and apply it to our hearts right now in the name of Jesus. For only you know the words that will steal our heart, Father. Only you know the words, once again, Lord, that will bring peace. So bring your peace, your peace right now in the name of Jesus. And Master, we'll be careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for it is yours and yours alone. But we ask this prayer now, Master, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
notice from the, the message translation, we, we used the New Living Translation, but the message translation, it brings the words of life, amen. And instead, I'll start reading the scripture, Matthew 6, verses 5 through 8, and it says, And when you come before God, don't turn it into a theatrical reflection either. All these people making a regular show out of their prayers, hoping for stardom. Do you think God sits in a box seat? Here's what I want you to do. Find a quiet and secluded place so you won't be tempted to role play before God. Just yes. be there as simply and as honestly as you can man. Yes, Lord. The focus will shift from you to God. And you will begin to sense his grace. The world is full of so-called prayer warriors who are prayer ignorant. They are full of formulas and programs and advice, peddling techniques for getting what you want from God. Don't fall for that nonsense. This is your father you are doing. Yes, he knows better than you what you need. Yes, Our response to scripture comes from the James 2, 14 to 20. And verse 26, it says, Dear friends, do you think you'll get anywhere if you learn all the right words but never do anything? Does really talking about faith indicate a person really has it? What well, instance, you talk about an old friend, dress your rags and cast off. And say good morning, friend, clothe in Christ, feel the Holy Spirit, and walk off without providing so much as a coat or a cup of soup? Thank you.
Good morning, church. Good morning. It is now time for us to take up our tithes and our offerings. This is how we show our love to God and how we support the work of the church. God has blessed us so wonderfully, giving us uh, life and health and support to make it through each and every day. And we're to show our gratefulness in terms of how we turn and giving back a portion of what God has already given us. So this is what we call the presentation of tithes, offerings, and gifts. If you want to do it electronically, Gimplify online is available. But as the table, often tables brought forward, we will present now an opportunity for us to be here. Let us now first prepare ourselves in prayer. Dear God, we are grateful for your goodness, for your mercy, for your bountiful love. Now that we bring these gifts unto you, we ask your blessings on them. Every gift and every gift. And those that have not to give, God, we, we pray special blessings on them. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, if you would please stand, if you can, and we will march around the table following the direction of our ushers as we will march and at least smile at our team. Our steward and our trustee that are here. Amen.
few moments on our worship service to lift up the names of persons that are on our heart for which we would like to remember them in prayer. Perhaps they are a family member of sick. Perhaps they are a family member that has just gone through a friend that has just gone through a terrible situation, such as a death in the family, whatever the circumstances are. But because you're here, you want to represent them in prayer. So I'm going to ask that you would just stand and just call out their name so that we might hold them up in prayer in a few moments. So we'll start in the back here. Hey, Wallace.
the Ernest Miguel and Blue Ernest and anyone else. I'd like to stand for our brothers and sisters in El Paso and for Dayton and those that feel threatened by our government or by those who have been empowered by our government to spread hate. Pray for their comfort. You let us not pray. Dear God, we take this moment to lift up others, those that are going through the pains of the loved ones passing, those who are struggling with difficult diagnoses and diseases, those that are going through their own mental strain and stress, those who are being hounded and hated, those who are being misunderstood. God, we, we lift all of them up right now. We ask that you would move as only you can, not only on their situations, but on us, so that we might be your vehicles of love. We thank you, God, for just this moment of reflection. Comfort them now, God, and comfort us. As we stand for them and with them, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so
Father, God Almighty, the one who is mighty in God, the one who is mighty in sickness, who is mighty in every possible way. We so stop honoring you because of who you are. God, we ask now that you bless this moment of preaching, that you would hide this preacher behind the cross, but cover him with your blood. Let the people see less of me and more of me. Open our ears and open our hearts and open our minds and use us for your glory. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. I, I'd like for you to pay reference to both of the scriptures you find in your bulletin. That which comes from Matthew, the sixth chapter, verses five through eight, which Jesus talks about how we ought to pray. And then James, the second chapter, in which the half brother of Jesus talks about the issue of faith and belief. And I want to lift up verses 17 and 26 of the second chapter of James, which says, Isn't it obvious that God talks? Without God acts is outrageous nonsense. And then verse 26 says, just as the body is dead without breath, so also faith is dead without good works. I want you to turn to your neighbor if you're sitting close to somebody and say, neighbor, neighbor. oh neighbor, oh neighbor, do something. Do something. Turn to your other neighbor and say, other neighbor, other neighbor, own neighbor, own neighbor, do something. Really sorry. It's just a 
courteous. Yeah, it's an icebreaker. It's just something to say. I'm sorry for your loss. It, it is the kind of thing we are used to saying whenever we don't have really words to say. When we come to somebody who has suffered a tragedy of some sort, we give some kind of expression or immediate condolences like, uh, I'm sorry to hear about your loss. I'm stunned with the news. My heart ached to hear the news. I'm here for you. But do we really mean it? Or we're just finding a filler right. so that we can just be courteous and nice and kind. And there's nothing wrong with that. But sometimes we are at a loss for real words. So we go back to the low hanging fruit and we say that. Then there's sometimes we really mess up and say, oh, it's going to be all right. That's cruel. Because in the moment, it's not. Yeah. It's tough. Or, I know exactly how you're feeling. Well, no, you don't. But even if you suffered a death in your own family, everybody's experience is different. Or, worse, is he or she's in a better place. But, but when we say these words, because it's a nice thing to say, it's comfortable. I know we're trying to be helpful, but sometimes we just need to take a deep breath and, and step back and, and analyze the situation so that we aren't just saying something just to say something. Now, now I'm guilty too. Uh, I'm guilty too, so I'm not just pointing fingers at you, pointing fingers at myself. But we have to learn how to, when we're in an uncomfortable situation, acknowledge that it's uncomfortable. Yeah. And sometimes the best thing we can do is to hold somebody's hand. And just to give them a hug, or just to be in their presence. But we just don't have to say something just to say something. But in our culture, it seems as if folk want to fill in whenever there's a tragedy. And the most common thing we hear now after there's been some terrible accident or fire or hurricane or shooting, our thoughts and prayers are with you. Now, I can't judge whether that person is in fact thinking and praying for that person. I don't know if they've left after that situation and spent hours before God praying for this person. But it seems to me that many times all we're doing is just filling in space. And all they're doing is filling in space. Our thoughts and prayers are with you, period. Then they move on to something else. If our thoughts and prayers are with somebody, it should be the beginning of the sentence and not the end of the sentence. Because then we should do something right. when somebody is suffering something in our thoughts and prayers. Because if we don't, it's just a nice gesture. There you and go. it's really not meaningful. There you go. Well, we have our politicians now that are pretty good at saying, you're in our thoughts and prayers. And the ones who really try to get you to think that they're very pious or religious, they can sound like any mortician. Our thoughts and our prayers. Yes. Our <laughs> then they move on. But they, they don't do anything. They just say that to sort of make them look good. But not really concerned with you or the victim. All right. Because in our country, where we have so many mass shootings, you can't just say our thoughts and prayers are with you and then not do anything. Yeah, right. but, but that's what the governor of Ohio discovered just last Sunday. He, he was there in Dayton and, and there was a crowd that was just mourning the, the tragedy that had just happened. And he was mounting the stage to say to them his thoughts and his prayers are with them. And people wouldn't have it at all. They started shaking their heads and shaking their fists. Not that they're trying to be disrespectful, but sort of organically they began to say, do something. Do something. Do something. Those who are in a position to make changes can't just get away with saying, our thoughts and prayers are with you, and then move on. We're going to have sound. You know, we're, we're some tea. We're, now let's move on to the next subject. Because it doesn't matter what 
for you, let this persuasion you are, if all you are doing is saying our thoughts and prayers are with you, just like God bless you. Yeah. Salud. It is words with really no meaning. Yeah. But for Christians, for those of us that follow Jesus Christ, we need to understand that when Jesus encountered somebody that had some difficulties or tragedies, you won't find anywhere in the Bible where Jesus says, my thoughts and prayers are with me. When he saw a situation, he then got into action and began doing something with that victim or doing something with that person. Even the history of the civil rights movement, and that's why the pictures in the front of the book, what we see, those that in the 50s and 60s were first kneeling to pray. Then they got up and marched. Marched on Selma, marched on Washington, marched on the fire hoses. But they didn't just say, here's our thoughts and prayers, hallelujah, and then went back home. Yeah, yeah. That's why I put in the front of the bulletin the African proverb, when you pray, move your feet. All right. That, that, that means that after we pray, you got to do something. Prayer is not to be the substitution for not doing anything. We have to do something. God is expecting us to do something. In fact, in our prayers, we're asking God, what can I do for that person or for that situation? God, use me as an instrument for your peace. Not just, I'm praying, God, you do it, God. I'll finish. But that kind of Christianity is called NATO. N-A-T-O. No action, talk only. <laughs> and, and, and our religion has got a bad rap because all we do is talk good and do nothing. In the case of the fire and the floods that we've experienced here in Ventura County, it's more than just giving thoughts and prayers. Sometimes it's giving blood. Sometimes it's giving money. Sometimes it's giving food. Sometimes it's giving help. We all can't do the same thing, but we can do something. If, if, if your house has been burned down, you don't need just thoughts and prayers. You need some help. You need somebody to come around and help you move some things. And if you're sick and you find yourself in bed at home, you need more than thoughts and prayers. You need somebody to do some grocery shopping for you. Yeah. Somebody to take care of the kids. Somebody to clean the house. Somebody to take you someplace. Take you to the doctor. You need more than thoughts and prayers. Yeah. And what I'm saying is that there's nothing wrong with thoughts and prayers. As long as they're at the beginning of the sentence and it ends with a semicolon or a comma which means there's more to come. After you've thought and prayed about it, then what you're going to do. That's right. Then what you're going to do. And it's incumbent upon all of us to do something. Yes, Lord Jesus. Right now, many of our neighbors, many of our co-workers, many of those who work with folks, whose citizenship papers may not be in order right now are under attack and assault. Some of them don't know if they go to work today, whether or not they'll come back. And what's going to happen to their families? We're required to do more than thoughts and prayers. If there are folks that you know that are in those circumstances, you need to know that I, I, I'm with you. Lord, we understand what it's like to be hunted down by the militia, by the KKK. Don't we? Haven't we seen that in our history and in our lifetime? But we know that God is able, and we got to let them know that we're with you. And for some, we have to say to families, we'll help support you. If you find yourself in a tough situation, it's more than thoughts and prayers. It's about love. 
It's about caring. It's about letting people know that they're not by themselves. That's what we're called to be as Christians. And you can't just say, oh, I've done my job. I thought about it and I prayed about it. Now I'm going to have lunch. <laughs> we have to do something. It's beyond thoughts and prayer. Now I'm sharing this with you because there's been this movement to, to redefine Christianity as one that's just about thoughts and prayers. But that's all you got to do, and you have done your duty. Nowhere did Jesus only do thoughts and prayers. When you open up your Bibles to John 5, and Jesus comes to the pool of Bethesda, there's this man who's been sick for 38 years. Jesus could have said, hey, brother, my thoughts and prayers are with you. You've been sick a long time. But Jesus asked him, do, do you want to be well? Do you want to be made whole? And then he said, get on up. Pick up your bed and walk. You don't have to stay there any longer. He helped him become well. Or the ten lepers. Jesus, have mercy on us. Jesus could have said, y'all got lepers. Uh, uh, my thoughts and prayers are with you. Ah, but, but Jesus healed them and said, go, show yourself to, to the rabbi. Show, show yourself to the church. He never walked away from a situation. We who are followers of Jesus are to do the same thing. No, we don't have the power to command the waves to stop and the winds to stop blowing. But we can be the shelter in a storm. But we can be help for folks who are looking for help just in our own way. When we think about it and when we pray about it, the question we ask God is, God, what do you want me to do? You know my gifts. You know my abilities. You know what I have. I want to be your hands. I want to be your feet. I want to be your eyes. I want to be your angel. God, deputize me to be your help. That's going beyond thoughts and prayers. See, the church has to regain its good reputation again. If all we do is to leave here and say, when we see a hungry person, <laughs> our thoughts and prayers are with you, brothers, and then just keep on walking, they still hungry. What good are our thoughts and prayers? So I just recently met with the new director of, of housing here for the city of Oxnard. He's just getting his feet on the ground. I said, well, when you put together your program, whatever you want to do, I, I, I'm committing this church uh -huh. to work with you. Right. That we're not going to be one of those churches that say, oh, look at all those homeless people in the park. And not do anything. But let, let's work together so that we can help be partners in a situation. Hey. We are more than thoughts and prayers. We are helpers. Amen? We are helpers. That's why in James, he raises the question, what good is it to say, God bless you to a hungry person and not feed them? Or God bless you to one who needs clothes and not clothe them? There are things we can do. In our bulletin, we list every week Folks that we know who are behind the wall, uh -huh. that they made some mistakes. And right now they're locked up. Yeah. They need more than our thoughts and prayers. Maybe all we can do is write them a letter. But that's a major move on their part. I can tell you, their homeboys and homegirls ain't writing nothing. They're sitting there, and they, nothing will happen to them until they get back. And, oh, man, we glad to have you back home. But while they're gone, they need to hear from some people yeah. who love the Lord and say, hang on in there, brother. Hang on in there, sister. Yeah. Or if you happen to know their family, help them to go through the storm. <laughs> we are more than thoughts and prayers. We are people of action. Yes. Our leader, our Christ, the Messiah, Jesus, was one of action, not just thoughts and prayers. Where there was a, the 
blotted them in the cemetery? Jesus could have said, I keep messing with him. He crazy. He, he called out the demons in him. Dealt with them. He gave them more than thoughts and prayers. Yeah. And so must we. God will put you in a situation where you know somebody who is hurting or distressed or uncomfortable or going through some stuff. You can break the ice if you like and say, God bless you. I, I, I'm thinking about you. I'm praying for you. But can we pray together? Because you know if you pray with somebody, the, the Bible thing comes to the action that when two or three are gathered in his name, that, that he's in the midst. So when you pray with somebody, you're bringing Jesus into the gathering. And then in our prayers, we get ask God, what can I do? It may not be much, but we don't have to do much. We just have to do the little we can. Yeah. And that makes all the difference in the world. I'm telling you, hold these hands for a good person. Make a difference. Going and getting the medicine for somebody who can't get to the pharmacy makes a difference. Give it a hug. A gender appropriate hug. <laughs> <laughs> to encourage somebody makes a difference. Well, we don't know all the science about it, but we do know this, that there are hormones inside of us that are only released when a person is feeling better or wants to feel better. Yeah. And we can help people yeah. feel better, not because of any prescription we've written, but just the human touch. Yeah. Because we're made to touch one yeah. another. So, I don't know your situation, or the people in your space, or the people in your family. Right. But you have an opportunity to be God's messenger, yeah. God's angel, God's hands, and God's lips, and God's yeah. love yeah. 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 to show in their space. Not only am I thinking about you, not only am I praying for you, but I'm here to in whatever way I can. Thank you. And it may not be much. It don't have to be. It's what, however God empowers you. And God has different instructions for each of us. But we can and we will make a difference if we just trust God to lead us yeah. and not worry about it. So we're to go beyond thoughts and prayers. Uh -huh. We're to have our prayers to have some feet to begin moving to make a difference, yes. moving to lift somebody, moving to encourage somebody, yes. moving to do something for them. We're not helpless. Yes. We're not without resources. God knows what you got. God knows what we have. Yes. God's not going to ask us to do any more than we're capable of doing. Right. Right. But if we just trust God in this situation, say, God, show me with what I have, what experience I have, what gifts I have, what resources I have. Show me how I can help. And when we do that, we will make a difference for somebody. St. Francis of Assisi has been given the authorship of this poem, although he didn't write it. It was written 1,500 years after he died. But still it says, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Oh, divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in parking that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Dr. King is to end his sermons by reciting the song that Lady Jackson was continuing to sing. If I can help somebody as I pass along, if I can cheer somebody with a word or a song, if I can show somebody that they're traveling wrong with my living, shall not be in vain. If I can do my duty as a 
Christian art, if I can bring back beauty to a world of wrong, if I can spread love's message as the master taught, then my living shall not be in vain. Our living is not to be in vain. We're to go beyond just the nicety of words. It's uncomfortable at first. But trust God after you've thought about it and after you've prayed about it. And see what God puts you in place where you will be at the right place, at the right time, for the right person, for the right situation. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died to buy my heart. And in the grave is there to prove my Savior lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. And life is worth you. Just because of you.